we've been talking about the public health sector this morning and we've been talking about whether or not it's good for politicians to interfere or inter amongst public servants. You know me, I don't trust public servants, never have. I've always thought they're not the smartest people on the planet, but I've always considered that once they get into those positions of unelected and unaccountable authority, it seems to me, they always do stupid stuff. Well, the chances of finding out about doing stupid stuff have lessened over the years because, well, frankly, the media who used to go and use the Official Information Act and a whole series of other um, devices to be able to hold accountable these organisations have disappeared or are disappearing. Therefore, it's been left to other groups to do the job that was once the job of the mainstream media and a good example of that would be the taxpayers' union. Um, and the latest is snouts in their troughs one is the taxpayers' union have got stuck into and found out about what the Ministry of Health have been doing, a cash-strapped organisation without enough money to be able to pay for basic services, to put an um, effective freeze on hiring particularly clinical and nursing staff, decided amidst all that to go and have a conference and let's go and talk about what happened next with um, Taxpayers Union representative Alex Eames. Alex, welcome to the show. Good to see you, mate. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here, Michael. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, Alex, because I don't think we've, I've interviewed you before, have I, or have I? No. No, this is my first time on, on this show. Um, I just, just came over from, you know, I obviously sound a bit funny. Uh, yeah, you I do. Just came That's why I'm asking Canada. you. <laughs> I came over from Canada and, uh, what I was doing work that similar work to what I'm doing here. I was working with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, and I was I was digging up waste there. And uh, so I decided got in, got in touch with uh, Jordan Williams, and then they brought me down over here. And I've been doing the the same thing, but uh, on on this end of the equator. So ah, good on you. Oh, listen, and you're all not you're not paid by the public sector. So delighted to have you here. Listen, um, exactly. the latest one is you've come up with and is uh, 300 health New Zealand leaders um, go to a conference. Um, why were you looking for something? Did you know something was amiss? Well, it, uh, yeah, you know, it, it just seems a bit odd. So, you know, we've been really doing a lot of work on health New Zealand. Right now, they're, you know, they're, their books are in shambles. We found out that they've lost, you know, $147 million every single month for the last four months. And then all of a sudden, you, you start looking, you find this OAA, and they have, you know, they've decided to spend $60,000 on catering uh, for senior level management at a conference. So it's uh, it cl clearly, it's it's unfortunate, you know, they, they keep crying, they need more funding and everything, but it's, it's uh, I think maybe we have to cut, cut the spending on, uh, you know, the catering first. It might be a good place to start. Yeah, I mean, as upskilling organisations is, is, is part of any particular or public or private sector. But what you're suggesting is that this wasn't an upskilling exercise, it was one of those sort of junket conferences. Well, yeah, they had the, you know pulled in the minister there to kind of you know sit, say give a, a, context, a mission yeah. statement, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, just give a kind of mission statement. But uh, really, is that really necessary when when you're looking at the current state of our health system? I think uh, I think that could have been done over an email, okay. and uh, then you kind of you know actually try <laughs> to start start fixing actual problems instead of you know blowing blowing money on you know six thousand dollars on. Uh, you know, nice little canapes. Yeah, and, 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 and it's not just that. I mean, that, that's obviously the sort of exclamation mark, the cream on the top, so to speak, lit, the literal cream. Um, uh, every canapé costing $25, which just seems extraordinary. No, $32 each, good God. Um, $32 for a canapé, God, I'm in the wrong business. Um, but no, the other thing that was extraordinary was that you're absolutely right. This is a conference. They fly 300 health professionals, 300 health professionals uh, in to talk and, and go to sort of a normal conference when they have a massive... So it's not just, I would imagine, the cost of the breakfast and the catering but it would also assume be the cost of the airfares, the accommodation, the taxi charges as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's all 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 included, right? So uh, we're you know digging up that information as well. But it's uh it's it's funny, it, you know they 
<laughs> that that this this is what you know th this is their priorities right now. At uh, um, and you got to just kind of wonder who's really in charge of the books right now, right? Um, uh, it's uh, really disrespectful for taxpayers, unfortunately, and uh, it's time for the taxpayer tab um, with these officials to end. Yeah, uh, so just just to get this right, what you've uncovered is the sixty thousand dollar catering bill, the sixty thousand dollar venue hire. Uh, I think the venue was the yes. Sky City um, Stadium, is it in Wellington? Yeah, that, that's correct. Yeah, you've you've just touched on it essentially, haven't you? I mean, it's the the, the cater the, the accommodation, the airfares. Um, the, as I said, the taxi fares and all the ancillary costs, they'll blow this budget out of the water. Yeah, yeah, blowing the budget out of the water. And, it, and it's, you know, it's so funny. They, they just, you know, like I said, every single month for the last four, four months, they're losing $147 million. So, I mean, uh, th this definitely is uh, the, the, just the tip of the iceberg. But, I mean, uh, good place to start would be to, to cut these lavish nice-to-haves. Yes, it would be. Um, all right. Now, um, does, does what happening at the Ministry of Health unique to it? Or is this a problem that we've got across the public sector in your view? <laughs> well, you know, we've had a really, really couple of busy weeks. Our researchers are doing a fantastic job. But uh, the last couple of weeks have just been an absolute shamble, I guess. Uh, you know, we just the other week, uh, uh, we found out that at the Cannes Film Festival, over $145,000 was spent on champagne, booze, catering. And the worst part about this one is that all this money was just going to schmooze uh, Hollywood elites to bring movies down to New Zealand. And I think, and it's just amazing, you know, they, they've kind of, the film commission has defended this and they're saying, oh, well, we have, you know, the reason we're doing this is, you know, we're bringing films down to New Zealand. But I think the big question is, is, okay, this, this, this happened quite a few months ago now, where are the films? Which films have you really successfully brought to New Zealand by, by spending all this, uh, all this money on food, more catering and, uh, and more booze, right? So yes, um, in, in actual fact, your investigations say show that it was only four bureaucrats that were involved in the spending of that one hundred forty-five thousand. It wasn't exactly like it was a tribe of them. It was just four. Is that right? Just four. Yes, that's exactly right. That's just just four. So I mean, you can do the cost average on how much that costs uh, per per person, right? But uh, it's uh, it's uh, not that definitely. Again, another example of what the Prime Minister has said, is a nice to have that we need to get rid of in the public service. Um, yeah, and, the, and yet there is an argument, isn't there, that, well, <laughs> unfortunately, that's the way that industry works. Um, you, it's, it's, it's a personal contact industry uh, at the end of the day. It's about creating those contacts um, and that good things can flow from that. Um, I guess the diplomatic service does this all the time, but you would argue, I suppose, they don't spend that much money. Well, uh, let's not get too ahead of our, ourselves there. I think uh, we, we have plenty of examples of, uh, uh, of the foreign, foreign service always spending a whole bunch of money uh, as well. I mean, the prime minister just spent $399 on a harmonica, right? So, uh, so that's that just a an gift, example. wasn't it? Yes, it was a gift. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so, but I mean, uh, th there's, there's just pl plenty of examples, no matter which way you look. Uh, it's keeping us really busy right but uh, you bring it back to the the uh, the film festival um now yeah, like i said uh they are okay this is how the industry works yada 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 okay sounds good you're keeping contacts but uh why is tim the taxpayer getting stuck with the bill right uh these you know that's hard working kiwi money and we haven't really seen a cost benefit benefit analysis <laughs> on how much this just really about that yeah mm. No, no, fair, fair point. 